All right, so this is section 1-2, points, lines, and planes. Our learning objective is to understand basic terms and postulates of geometry. There's a ton of definitions. We're not solving equations. We're not measuring anything. We are just talking about basic terms and postulates. Take a look at all of our vocabulary. Point, line, plane, collinear points, coplanar, space, segment, ray, opposite rays, postulate, axiom, and intersection. Tons of vocabulary, which is why this is printed out for you guys. All right, so the first term, these are undefined terms. You're going to get questions specifically saying what three items are undefined. A point is undefined because it doesn't have a length, a width, or a height. It indicates location. We can represent by putting a capital letter and a little dot. represented by a straight path. Hint, use a ruler when you draw one. That extends in two opposite directions with no ends. A line has an arrow on each side to indicate it goes on forever. Something that goes on forever has no length. It's infinite. So it doesn't have, it is also considered an undefined term. It has no end and no thickness. A line contains infinitely many points. You can name a line by any two points on that line. So, for example, AB is going to have a line over the top and two arrows going in each direction. That tells me we're a line versus a line segment. The same line would be represented by BA. Or if, like in this case, this line is the um, cursive letter L. We can call this line out. The last undefined term is a plane. A plane is a flat surface that extends out forever. It has no thickness and no end. A plane is undefined because it's infinite. And in a plane, it's infinitely many lines. So tons of lines, they shoot up, they shoot left, they shoot right, they shoot across. They're just shooting all over the place, lines. You can name a plane by a capital letter like this guy is P, or by at least three points in that plane that do not all lie on the same line. So if you guys see, it makes a little triangular shape, kind of like GPS uses triangulation of points to locate. Um, same kind of thing. So a plane is going to be three points that are not on the same line. Two of the points are going to be on the same line. The third one's got to be not on the same line. So points that lie on the same line are called collinear points. Points that lie in the same plane are coplanar. All the points of a line are coplanar. So if it's on a line, it's on the plane that goes through the line. Points that lie on the same line are collinear. Points that lie in the same plane are coplanar. And all points of a line are coplanar. Naming points, lines, and planes. What are two other ways to name the line QT? We can go TQ, just reverse it. We can go, we can pick another point, which is N, and go Q, N. But it's got to have the arrows going both ways. And it's got to have the letters. So let's look at our got it. What are two other ways to name R, S? Well, you can always reverse and say S, R, but it's got to have the lines over the top. And then we can pick another point on that line, which is Q, so we can call it RQ. Geometry is pretty nitpicky. If I left out one of the arrows on this right-hand line, if I left it out, it would be wrong. So it ha it's very specific to the, um, 
to needing to be exactly written correctly. Um, B says, what are two more ways to name plane P? So with a plane, I need three capital letters. So plane P could be V, R, S. Or R, S, V. Or V, Q, S. I just need three points on that plane. Why did I use T or N? Because they're not part of the plane. They're not on the plane. Don't use them. What are, what are the names of three collinear points? So three points that are on the same line are RQS. So we can do RQS. We can have TQN. Or we can have... Uh, what are the names of three other collinear points? Three other, oh, I guess that's just over and above. And then what are two points that are not coplanar with R, S, and V? We just said that, they're T and N. Okay, a little bit more vocabulary. As segments. So these are defined terms. We did undefined terms. Now we're doing defined terms. And um, you guys can just write segment. Just write the, def um, the word and you can fill in the rest from the book. So a segment is a line with two endpoints. So it cuts off. We name it the same way we name a line, but instead of the arrows, it has just the line. All right, so a segment is just one single line on top and the letters that go with it. A ray has one endpoint, one line off in one direction. We name it by putting the endpoint and any other point on the line. So it looks like the endpoint A, and then the direction it travels, which is in direction B. So it is A comes first because it's the endpoint, then B, and then it has the line on the top with the arrow. And the arrow does indicate which direction the ray is going. So this tells us this ray is going from point A to point B. Opposite rays are two rays that share the same endpoint and form a line. You can name opposite rays by their shared endpoint and any other point on each ray, such as CA with a line with the arrow on it, or CB. So because C is the endpoint, if you look, C is that endpoint, we have a ray that goes CB, although I've cut off. The pen part of that. Yeah. CB is a ray that goes to the right, and CA is a ray that goes to the left. The two together form one line. Okay. What are the names of the segments in the figure at the right? So we want segments, that means it's a line that cuts off at two endpoints. So there is DE, and if you look, it's the capital letter with just a line over it, no arrows. There is ED, there is EF, there is FE, there is DEF, and there is FD. What are the names of the rays in the figure? There is DE. There is DEF, there is ED, there is EF, and FD, and FE. Which of the rays in part B 
are opposite. So ED and EF are opposite rays. Let's look at this, got it, to make sure we got it. EF and FE form a line. Are they opposite rays and explains? EF and FE form a line. Are they opposite rays? They are not because they do not share an endpoint. So when you look at the definition of opposite rays, opposite rays are two rays that share the same endpoint and form a line. So they need to share that endpoint and EF and FE don't share an endpoint. All right, so here's some definitions. A postulate or an axiom is an accepted statement of fact. It's something that we don't have to prove. It just is. So, for example, postulate 1 1 through any two points is exactly one line. Two points, there's only one line that passes through. When you have two or more geometric figures, their intersection is a set of points the figures have in common. For example, postulate 1 2, if we have two lines, and they intersect, then they intersect at exactly one point. Two lines when they intersect make a point. Two planes when they intersect make one line. Boo. So when a, two lines intersect, they make a point. When two planes intersect, they make a line. So let's look at that, how that plays out for us in geometry. Each surface of the box represented at the right represents part of a plane. What is the intersection of the plane ADC, which is this top guy right here, and BFG? I think I'm a BFG. So, um, so where they intersect is this line here. Two planes intersect, they make a line. The intersection of two planes is a line, which is right here. BC are on that line, so let's name the line BC with line on top. What are the names of two planes that intersect at BF? So BF is right here. And we can say uh, plane BFG and plane EFB. Why do you only need to find two common points to name the intersection of two distinct planes? Because two points is what you need to make a line when the lines intersect. When the planes intersect, they make a line. And to name a line, you only need two points. All right, postulate 1 4. Through any three non-collinear points, there is exactly one plane. So to make a plane, we need three points. Let's look at our example problem. What plane contains points N, P, and Q? Shade the plane. N, P, Q. And that is this bottom. The plane on the bottom of the figure contains N, P, and Q. What plane contains J, M, and Q? And shade the plane. Oh, that's this little diagonal one right here. What plane contains points L, 
M and N. That's this kind of diagonal one. Copy the figure in problem four and shade the plane. What is the name of the line that is coplanar with JK and KL? What's the name of the line that is coplanar? So on the same play. How about JM? End of section 1-2.